ready for the event. Houston Station, we're ready for the event. SM Conference, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Is that NASA? Station, this is a sound. How do you read us? We have you a little bit garbled, but mostly readable. How do you have us? I'll take that. I will take that. Oh my gosh. They're calling from space. Okay. So I know we don't have a ton of time. Um, so Jasmine and Laurel, they're from the 2017 class of astronauts. Obviously they're in space. Um, and we wanna just maximize this opportunity. We only have about 20 minutes. Um, so I understand that you guys are both in the midst of your first mission to the space station. Can you tell us your first thoughts when you reached the orbiting laboratory? Yes, we have you loud and clear now, by the way. Welcome to the space station. So it's funny, my, some of my first thoughts were actually where am I? Um, you know, we had trained for hundreds of hours back on Earth in the mock-ups at Johnson Space Center. But when you get here and you come into, you know, I we docked to Zenith, so we were coming in to Node 2 from up above, and it was a different angle than I'd ever looked at it before. And I was just so disoriented. So I think I spent my first week uh, just feeling very disoriented and not knowing which way to turn, left or right. And for me, um, the first, like my most vivid memory of when I got to space station was actually seeing it from Soyuz as we were approaching space station. Um, I had a window right next to me and I looked out and all of a sudden, you know, I was like looking inside working. And then the next time I looked out, my whole window was just filled with a solar array and then the truss of space station and actually our airlock and some of our other modules. And just seeing it in person for the first time um, was, like my first thought was like, oh my God, this is so beautiful. And also um, it just really like, I've, I've known what a complex and impressive vehicle it was, but seeing it in person for the first time um, really made me realize like just what an achievement it is that we've accomplished. And um, also it was just, yeah, just incredible to see it. Oh my God, this is so cool. And by the way, you guys are both having great hair days. Love this. Um, so the conversation that is taking place, we're in the middle of a session called From Dreaming to Doing. Um, how do we utilize creativity and imagination to accelerate our off-world futures? So in that sense, I would love to hear from the both of you. Um, as you were going to make this journey to be an astronaut, what inspired you? Was it art? Was it a song? Was it a movie? Oh man, well, so I had a couple things that inspired me. First, I grew up in Houston, Texas, so I had NASA Johnson Space Center down the road. So I had a lot of early exposure to NASA and the space shuttle program. Uh, but I also grew up in the mid 90s and Apollo 13 was definitely um, a huge source of inspiration for me to wanna work in the space program. And uh, then there were also, you, you know, you mentioned music and like the first two CDs I had, I think were uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers because they had a song on it called Airplane <laughs> and also Dave Matthews Band Satellite. They weren't really singing about airplanes and satellites, but uh, middle school me was super excited about those songs. And for me, it also started at a, at a young age for me. Um, initially, it was uh, inspired by a book report I did on Valentina Tereshkova. And um, I'll be honest, I don't remember the details of the book I read, but I do remember making an astronaut costume with my mom and wearing it into school that day to pretend I was Valentina Tereshkova. And then as I got older, same as Laurel actually, Apollo 13 um, was, uh, that was one of, my highlight movie going experiences as a kid and just seeing what what people could accomplish when they when they work together to tackle a problem um, and and it just grew from there as I got older.
Well, I just have to say, I am a huge Red Hot Chili Peppers fan. So you're, you guys were already like two awesome kick-ass girls in my book, but this is taking it to a whole new level. Okay, so our theme this year at Ascend is all about accelerating our sustainable off-world futures through collaboration. Um, what does collaboration mean for each of you and why do you feel it's so important? To me, collaboration means working together towards a common goal or a common mission. And for me, something I, I love, my crew on Crew 7, we had four crew members each from four different nations, but we were united and working towards a common goal. And similarly up here, it's the International Space Station. We have people from from different countries working together and we're all working towards a common goal. And I think that's important because different, based on different backgrounds, you bring a different perspective to the table and it just adds reinforcement and adds redundancy. And we just work stronger when we work together. And I'll just add to what Jazz said, um, because I feel the same way about all of it. Um, I think what, one of the best parts of our job right now is the international aspect of it. And all the people that we get to collaborate, both from different countries and also within the United States, um, bringing in uh, people with different backgrounds from yours, different perspectives from yours, just makes the whole experience uh, much more richer, much richer, and then also um, allows you, I think, to solve bigger problems, more complicated problems, because you're drawing on the experience and knowledge of a lot of different people. Wow, thank you to the both of you for those answers. Um, I think they know a thing or two about collaboration. Um, so you hear a lot from prior astronauts about the ability um, to look at humanity differently when you get to the space station and how you feel about Earth. Um, is that true for both of you as well? Like, does your, has your perspective changed now because you have this overview effect? <clears throat> That's a great question. And we were actually talking about that uh, right before this event um, because a lot of the times people say, you know, oh, it's a perspective change, but uh, for both of us, I think it reinfor just reinforced a lot of things that we already felt. Um, just the mm -hmm. sense of how special our planet is, how beautiful our planet is, mm -hmm. um, and its fragility and everything we need to do to take care of it. Um, we knew that and we, we kind of like knew how important all of this was, but then getting to see Earth from this perspective um, and getting to see it in person with our own eyes and all of the different places on the planet has really just um, made us understand and feel that all, uh, all that much more deeply. What she said, everything uh, she just said, I agree with. <laughs> Sorry, you guys are so funny. You guys, I, I would love to be just at, at a dinner table in space with you too. Um, so, I think one of the things too, we also, I love the juggling. The juggling is also part of the performance. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, so there are a wide range of research and development that, it, that can be performed on the space station, but you guys are both kick-ass women. Can we just talk about the importance of letting other young women and people from diverse backgrounds know that there's this new, whole new role opening up uh, for different players and and how does that impact you um i think something i always want to pass on to to young girls and boys is that not only do you belong in these fields and doing these things but you're needed we talked a bit earlier mm -hmm. about um I, I look at the world differently than Laurel looks at the world differently than Andy, differently than Satoshi and Alec and, and our entire crew because we've had different experiences that have led us to this point. So we see every problem slightly differently. And mm. when you have me looking at it one way, Laurel mm. looking at it another way, 
that all comes together and you you take the best of it and you get get rid of what doesn't add value and so it goes mm. back to like we're stronger when we collaborate mm. similarly we're stronger when we have people from different backgrounds whether that's different genders different religions different uh you know experiences in life uh and so you're needed in these fields mm. I love the, I, uh, the similarly sorry. also. Yeah. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Second delay. Um, I love the 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 microphone toss you guys just provided too. That was pretty awesome. Um, so other than standing here giving interviews to conferences, what do you guys actually do on the space station? Uh, well, we've spend most of our days doing a mix of science and maintenance activities. Um, so a typical day for us looks, uh, looks like waking up, having breakfast like you would at home, and then we usually have a morning meeting with the ground teams just to sync up. And then for the rest of the day, uh, we are scattered all over Space Station. Um, some of us are working on different science research projects. Some of us are doing maintenance, repairing uh, different components and different systems on Space Station. Uh, or and then and then also at some point in the day we work out uh, for about two hours a day as well, and then we wrap up the day with another tag up with the ground teams and then uh, pretty much have dinner and go to bed because usually the the days are are long and busy and so we're tired at the end of it. And just to to add to what Laurel said. That's something I love is that every day is different because there are so many different activities to do, not just to perform the science, but also to keep the space station um, up and running. And as she said, the days are pretty long and you have to really stay focused during the day because if you stop paying attention for a second, something's floating away and you just cost yourself an hour. Wow. Have there been any research projects that you've been supporting that really stood out to you in your time there? Definitely. Uh, one of the big research projects that I'm involved in is a project called Cypher, and it's a series of 14 different medical studies uh, that are all on me. So I'm the research subject. <laughs> and so I've been doing um, just in the initial days of my mission and then Periodically throughout my mission, um, I'll be doing all sorts of things, um, eye scans, ultrasounds, blood tests, things like that um, throughout my mission to help researchers learn more about how the human body adapts and thrives in microgravity. Um, I also really like the human research um, as well as um, studies that help set us up for going further in the solar system. Just recently, um, I was helping uh, sequence DNA to figure out what's in our water. We used to send those, well, we still do send those samples back down to ground to analyze them, making sure our water's good for us to, to drink and consume. But now when we go further, we're not gonna be able to just send it back down to the ground. So the studies where we're figuring out how can we do this uh, in house, uh, I also really enjoy. Wow, those are really interesting projects. Thank you so much for sharing that. What has surprised you both most about living on the space station? Honestly, Laurel touched on this earlier, but something um, for me, I didn't realize how amazed and enamored I would be by the space station itself. I had heard from everyone while looking back at Earth is incredible, but I remember the first time, so I didn't have a good view of the space station as we approached uh, in Dragon, because I had my displays in front of me. So the first time I really saw the outside was when I went uh, to look outside the cupola window. And I didn't realize I would be just so enamored by, it's just a, a marvel, like that we have constructed this space station uh, in a low earth orbit and it, every aspect of it is just amazing piece of technology.
And I think uh, for me, one of the surprising things on Space Station has been how quickly our brains adapt to a 3D environment. Uh, we do all of our training, of course, on Earth in 1G, where there's always a ceiling and there's always a floor and they're always in the same place. So we only ever see things from one point of view. Whereas up here, you can whip around a corner on the ceiling of one module and so you're looking at the ceiling of the next module and that's a, a view you've never seen before. And J Jasmine mentioned this earlier, but you, you have no idea where you are for a second. And at first, like in the first couple of days we were up here, I would have to stop and look around and like look down and look around and process where I am. And now I just really quickly, I'm like, oh, I, do, I don't even really think about it. I just know where I am. So how fast that adaptation happens and how adept our brains are at kind of restructuring our whole world, I think is, is pretty cool. I mean, I'm having major FOMO. I can't do that right now. Oh my gosh, thank you for all the acrobatics. That is fantastic. So the International Space Station is slated to remain <laughs> operational through 2030 and possibly beyond there. And then it's passing the torch on to the commercial destinations in low Earth orbit. What do you think the legacy of the space station will be when that happens? And how can the work you are both performing assist in that transition? Well, a lot of what we do up here is, and as far as research and then also um, just l what we learn about humans in space being up here is a stepping stone for all of our future exploration to the moon and Mars and beyond. And so the ISS is really a huge step um, towards those goals. And I think that we'll look back and say, well, all, of, ever, all the work that we did on the space station is what made this possible. And then I think as far as the legacy of the space station, um, one of the most important parts of that is the international partnerships that we've developed and all the work that we've done um, working with other countries in the world. It's kind of an unparalleled uh, cooperative project in the world that I, I don't think there are a lot of other things that you can point to and, and say, look at all these countries that are involved in this project and look at what they've done. And so I think one of the most important legacies of space station will just be in that international partnership and everything that we have achieved together. Okay, so I know we're running out of time, but you know I have to ask this question about the future. So space has evolved so much over the last 50 years. Where do you both see humanity in space in the next 50 years? Um, I personally hope that um, space does, you know, we've seen it in the last few years becoming more and more accessible than it ever was. Um, but still, most people, you know, right now can't just get up to space easily. I hope that accessibility continues to increase uh, over the next 50 years, um, because as you said, you know, we both had we knew the earth was a special place, but when you come up here and see it in the way that we do, um, it's just like instantaneous evidence of all that. And so if more people could see that, um, I, I think it would really be valuable. And I agree. Um, it's my dream too, that more people can come up here and see these views. I think our planet uh, will be a better place the more people can come up here and see the earth from this perspective. Well, I know we are running out of time. We got one more minute. So I just wanted to take the opportunity from Ascend to say thank you for calling us from space. It sounds like you guys have very busy day jobs, but this was such an incredible opportunity. And we are sending all of our love from earth up to above and Ad Astra. Thank you so much, ladies. Um, go boldly into the future. Thank you. It's been great. Thanks for all the great questions. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you to all participants from Ascend Station. We are now resuming operational audio communications.